Now, the new president of Somalia, Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, is being officially sworn in on Wednesday. His inauguration ceremony is being carried out under high scrutiny security in the capital, Mogadishu. Mohamed was elected two weeks ago, and his first act was to hold a meeting about the drought in Somalia. He's also promised to fight corruption, but that's just one of many challenges he's facing. <laughs> <coughs> well, joins me now in the studio for some further analysis. Thanks so much for coming in, Fidelis. Uh, what, do you, what is your take on this? Does this usher in a new era for Somalia, or can we kind of expect more of the same? Absolutely. Uh, Farmajo is uh, hugely popular among Somalis, both home and uh, abroad. And uh, he's seen as someone who the people actually wanted to emerge, and which is uh, not unsurprising that uh, you know, there were allegations, uh, or rather, you know, uh, claims that most of the lawmakers who voted for him were, uh, were more like swayed to support the incumbent, but they refused and had to support Farmajo. Because during his brief stay as prime minister between 2010 and 2011, when he <coughs> spent about seven months uh, in office, he's credited as uh, trying to run like an all-inclusive government. And he's also... Uh, credited with um, playing a major role in pushing out al-Shabaab from mm. Mogadishu. Because before then, al-Shabaab had almost taken over the entire country, and uh, especially the capital of Mogadishu. In fact, they were almost targeting, even taking over the presidency. So he's, uh, he's someone that people feel is a departure from the past and someone that can easily be influenced by foreigners. Okay, do you, do you feel he has popular support, particularly given that Somalis themselves didn't actually get to vote for this president? Yes, because when he was unceremoniously removed in office, after seven months mm -hmm. in 2011, the people took to the streets to tell you how popular, you know, how they felt that he was unjustly treated and they felt like he's the one that could have actually transformed the country. Because while he was in power, apart from ensuring that al-Shabaab was pushed out of Mogadishu, he made sure that civil servants were paid their salaries promptly. He made sure that the military was well-funded. He made sure they got their salaries on time. So that reduced corruption in the system. So people are now looking forward to him. They see him as someone who easily, you know, can relate with the people. And they see him as someone who is also trying to, more like, uh, who won't be running with a clique. Mm. Because the former president was accused of uh, playing uh, to the, uh, you know, to the uh, game of uh, this in the foreign uh, intervention groups, like, you know, the West trying to implement projects that please them. Right. Un unlike uh, doing the things that the Somalis actually wanted. Okay, alongside the violence in the country and the threats, particularly from al-Shabaab, there are also thousands of people who are risk, at risk dying of starvation. How can this president make combating hunger a priority? Uh, well, that is actually a, a major task that is facing him now. And that's actually what many people will be expecting to see how he will tackle that. I think one of the major you know, uh, steps he has to take, first of all, is to reconcile all the clans. because. After the 1991 uh, civil war in the country, uh, several territories broke into clan-based you know, uh, territories. So mo uh, most of the people who have been coming into government, once they come in, they only concentrate on their clan. So people are expecting him to bring all the clans together mm -hmm. so that people can actually move freely. Then people, he can bring people from all the clans into his government so that uh, you know, when he's carrying out this project, especially in trying to ensure that food aid gets to where it's supposed to get to, and that okay. people are you know, uh, given appointments so that they can also get a, a development. That will actually go a long way in trying to implement some of these projects, like the you know, tackling drought in the country. Okay, Fidelis, thank you so much for joining us with that.